Evolution and morality. This is something that comes up a lot. Um, even though it's nonsense. In the way that you're asking it, anyway. Our morality isn't based on the idea of natural selection. It's not like, hmm, what's right and what's wrong? Well, let me think about the processes of natural selection on the genome over time. That doesn't happen. What's morality? We do what feels right or we do what feels wrong whether we are good people or bad people the idea of evolution doesn't even come into it if you want to get more abstract and use evolution as just a, a broad way of describing how systems change over time yes our morality the development of our morality as a community does change over time because it favors things that works and disregard things that don't work so our morality as a society does evolve in that sense but that's not what you're talking about for the most part we do it because it feels right because maybe on a selfish you know I'm gonna help that duck that got stuck in the storm drain because I feel bad for the duck I can empathize with the duck and then as soon as I rescue the duck, I feel relief, I feel good. That's a bit of a simplistic explanation, but I think with that you can extrapolate to more broader and more varied behaviors. It's about, it's the same stuff. Uh, next question is about common ancestry. If we have a common ancestor with all of these animals, don't we have in us parts of them? Well, if you've ever seen pictures of the human embryo in development over the nine months. You'll see a couple of things that we don't have in our adult forms, but that we kind of grow and then remove in uh, in utero, like webbing on our fingers and tails and gill slits and stuff. Very weird. It's It's a waste of energy to do it that way, hence the clumsiness of biology <laughs> the the lack of good design like oops well it's not it's not a terrible waste of energy to grow this thing and then dissolve it so don't even bother changing it <laughs> anyway uh you mentioned a couple of animals specifically you mentioned uh squirrels squids monkeys and turtles we do have bits and pieces of their D of their DNA in us because we do have common ancestors with ancestors with us. We have more in common with monkeys. They're a more close relative. We have uh, a little bit less, but still a lot in common with squirrels because they are a more distant relative. But they're still uh, mammals. Turtles. They're still tetrapods, but they're they're reptiles. Actually, turtles are a weird kind of reptile, but we won't get into that. So we've got a, a decent amount in common with turtles, but um, you know, not 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 a whole lot. And then you go even farther back to squids, which are mollusks, and you have to go way back, way back to find our common ancestor with them. Uh, I mean, relatively, we don't have a lot in common with squids, but still, as far as the actual volume of our uh, genome, it's actually a decent amount, more than you would think. All right, next question. Uh, I think I'm paraphrasing a bit, but you know, so be it. A person cannot prove or disprove the existence of God, so doesn't any claim about the existence or non-existence of God require an equal amount of faith? To be 100% certain God is real, God exists, that requires faith. To be 100% certain there's no possible way God is impossible does not exist, that requires faith as well. However, the the person who calls himself an atheist, who actually has the 100% sure mentality, I've never met one. Take me for example. I think it's a bunch of BS, and the construct is totally man-made. There's no basis in reality for even thinking about it. However, I cannot claim for certainty that a being which, if I witnessed it or if I had knowledge of it, that I wouldn't be tempted to call it a god be it the deist god, uh, the, the, the knob turner writing the laws of physics and then boom, big bang, and then hands off. I mean, I would have to call that thing a god as well, and I have no way of knowing for sure whether or not that entity exists. 
But just because we're not 100% sure of something doesn't mean that we can't make a probability-based judgment. I'm going to flip a coin. It's got a 50% chance of landing here, a 50% chance of landing there. Fine, fine. I'm going to roll a die, a six-sided die. What are the chances that it lands on five? One out of six, right? Chances are it is not going to land on five. So if the bet is, oh, it's definitely going to land on five, or it's going to land on anything else but five, landing on anything else but five is a much safer bet to make. Okay, so we've gone over basic probability, right? If the god of the Bible existed, we would expect to see a couple things when we look for them, right? We would expect to see um, concrete physical evidence that the book of Genesis is literally true. Creation in six days, Adam, Eve from rib, Noah did in fact load all these species onto a boat, all that stuff, right? We would expect to see it. And in fact, scientists, as, as recent as like 150 years ago, were seriously looking for this stuff and surprised when they didn't find it. They just took it for granted. They're like, if we dig deep enough here, we should find geological evidence of Noah's flood. We expect to see it here. So let's go look for it and go find it. So they looked for it, didn't find it. Look for it over here, didn't find it. So if that's wrong in the book, what else is wrong? So you look through it and you go flip through page by page. Okay, this, that, this, that, doesn't make any sense. This logically contradicts itself. There's no historical evidence to back up the Exodus story, etc., etc., etc. So you're left with a book that is either entirely metaphorical, or at least for the most part metaphorical, with some grains of maybe exaggerations of real events. <clears throat> And then the, the claims, the more fantastic claims, especially about the existence of this creator God, are completely suspect. Like, wait, wait, wait. Only the down-to-earth stuff in this book actually happened. And everything else miraculous, we can't find any evidence that it actually happened. It appears to be fiction. So what about this creature? What about this thing? Then you're left to... Uh, then you're left with faith. You're like, well, uh, okay, fine. Creation didn't a actually happen in six days. Uh, Noah's story is purely metaphor. It's about uh, it's a story about something else. It's not actually about a flood or whatever. But this thing, this God creature, he's he's real. He's got to be real. He's the one thing that's real. Oh, and, and if you're a Christian, of course, the um, turning part of God into a man so that he could be tortured and killed, and then resurrected, and then beamed up to heaven. You have to believe that part too. That takes faith. And then because of its, not say what, ridiculousness, because of its absurdity, because of there is nothing like this that happens in everyday life, it takes a lot more faith to believe in something like that than to say that didn't happen. Uh, next question. If evolution by natural selection is true, then why the apparent good designs? Well, this is really easy. You'll hear the term illusion of design, illusion of design. That, that's about right. Uh, there's some things that are, you know, fairly well designed. They seem to work. You know, four legs. It's got symmetry on both sides, so the, the blueprint for it is, is fairly easy. It's a stable platform for a creature to walk on. Fins work, uh, swimming efficiently, blah, blah, blah. Basically, you already addressed this in one of your previous questions. It's all about death. Death of the ill-fitted. Death of the broken. Death of the bad designed. Failure of the bad designed to pass on their genes, so only the good designed creatures pass on their genes. Only the beneficial, or at least non-detrimental mutations get passed on. There's variation, and then what we end up, what we end up with you know, given a certain amount of time, is some stuff that works pretty darn well. And it's because of a blind and groping change over time in a ruthless world that gets rid of the mistakes and only keeps the successes. There's your answer. I think you probably could have 
trace that one on your own because you were already started there. You just have to extrapolate the same reasoning over time. But you seem like a smart guy. I think you're perfectly capable of understanding that.